we see with the eyes, but we see with the brain as well. And seeing with the brain is often called imagination. And we are familiar with the landscapes of our own imagination, our inscapes. We've lived with them all our lives. But there are also hallucinations as well. And hallucinations are completely different. They don't seem to be of our creation. They don't seem to be under control. They seem to come from the outside and to mimic perception. So I'm going to be talking about hallucinations and a particular sort of visual hallucination which I see among my patients. People in Eastern dress, in drapes, walking up and down stairs. A man who turns towards me and smiles, but he has huge teeth on one side of his mouth. Animals, too. I see a white building, it's snowing, a soft snow. I see this horse with a harness dragging the snow away. Then one night, the scene changes. I see cats and dogs walking towards me. They come to a certain point and then stop. Then it changes again. I see a lot of children. They're walking up and down stairs. They wear bright colors, rose and blue, like Eastern dress. Sometimes, she said, before the people come on, she may hallucinate pink and blue squares on the floor, which seem to go up to the ceiling the hallucinations were unrelated to anything she was thinking or feeling or doing, uh, that they seemed to come on by themselves or disappear. Uh, she had no control over them. She said she didn't recognize any of the people or places in the hallucinations, and none of the people or the animals, well, they all seemed oblivious of her. And she didn't know what was going on. She wondered if she was going mad or losing her mind. There's nothing wrong with your brain, there's nothing wrong with your mind. You have Charles Bonnet syndrome. Who is this Charles Bonnet? The first thing he said was he saw a handkerchief in midair. It was a large blue handkerchief with four orange circles. And he knew it was a hallucination. You don't have handkerchiefs in midair. And then he saw a big wheel in midair. But sometimes he wasn't sure whether he was hallucinating or not because the hallucinations would fit in the context of the visions. Hundreds of different figures, different landscapes of all sorts. On one occasion, he saw a man in a bathrobe smoking a pipe and realized it was himself. That was the only figure he recognized. Um, on one occasion, when he was walking the streets of Paris, he saw, this was real, a scaffolding. But when he got back home, he saw a miniature of the scaffolding, six inches high, on his study table. This repetition of perception is sometimes called palinopsia. Uh, saw a man in a striped shirt in a restaurant and he turned round and then he divided into six figures in striped shirts who started walking towards her and then the six figures came together like a concertina. Once she, when she was driving or rather her husband was driving, the road divided into four and she felt herself going simultaneously up four roads. A teenage boy sitting on the hood of the car. He was very tenacious and he moved rather gracefully when, when the car turned. And then when they came to a stop, the boy would do a sudden vertical takeoff, a hundred foot in the air, and then disappear. Cartoons. And these cartoons uh, would be transparent and would cover half the visual field, like a screen. And especially, she saw cartoons of Kermit the Frog. Geometrical hallucinations, the pink and blue squares the woman had, up to uh, quite elaborate hallucinations with figures, and especially faces. Faces, and sometimes deformed faces, are the single commonest thing in these hallucinations. And one of the second commonest is cartoons. So what is going on? That different parts of the visual brain are activated as they are hallucinating. When people have these simple geometrical hallucinations, the primary visual cortex is activated. This is the part of the brain which perceives edges and patterns. You don't form images with your primary visual cortex. 
when images are formed, a higher part of the visual cortex is involved in the temporal lobe. Um, and in particular, one area of the temporal lobe is called the fusiform gyrus. And it's known that if people have damage in the fusiform gyrus, they may lose the ability to recognize faces.